some uh, symbols of some commonly used components in circuit diagrams are shown below kindly kindly learn all the symbols all the 11 symbols which are mentioned here like electric what is electric cells a battery or combination of batteries plug key plug key or switch a wire joint okay and uh, remember in this way all emitters voltmeters you need to learn this all because uh, it has been seen that the uh, in the exams they randomly they, they give some of the symbols for uh, in a question just to just for a mark or a two marks so we need to learn this let us understand what is ohm's law ohm's law gives a relationship between a current between the current and potential difference now according to ohm's law at constant temperature the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its end that is i is directly proportional to v at constant temperature so v that is we can say that v is directly proportional to i that is current that is v equal to r i where r is a constant called resistance of the conductor the value of this constant depends on the nature length area of cross section and the temperature of the conductor so v upon i is equal to r that is constant so v upon i is always constant hence this is the ohm's law okay so the above equation is a mathematical expression of ohm's law and can be written in words as follows potential difference upon current is equal to constant that is the ratio of potential difference applied between the end of a ends of a conductor and the current flowing through it is a constant quantity called resistance the strength of an electric current in a given conductor depends on two factors potential first factor is potential difference across the ends of the conductor and second factor is resistance of the conductor the property of a conductor due to which it opposes the flow of current through it is called resistance that is resistance equal to potential difference upon current the resistance of a conductor depends on length thickness nature of material and temperature of conductor a long wire or conductor had has more resistance and a short wire has less resistance again a thick wire has less resistance whereas a thin wire has more resistance rise in temperature of wire increases its resistance so the si unit of resistance is ohm which is denoted by symbol omega the unit of resistance ohms can be defined by ohm's law as described as potential difference upon current is resistance so that is 1 ohm equal to 1 volt upon 1 ampere so this gives us the following definition for ohm that is 1 ohm is the resistance of a conductor such that when a potential difference of 1 volt is applied to its ends a current of 1 ampere flows through it let us study about good conductors resistors and insulators on the basis of the, their electrical resistance all the substances can be divided into three groups good conductors resistors and insulators those substances which have very low electrical resistance are called good conductors those conductors a good conductors allows the electricity to flow through it easily silver metal is the best conductor of electricity copper and aluminum metals are also good conductors electric wires are made of copper or aluminum because they have very low electrical resistance those substances which have comparatively high electrical resistance are called resistors the alloys like nichrome manganese and constantin constantin is also known by the the name eureka so all have quite high resistances so they are called resistors resistors are used to make those electrical devices where high resistance is required obviously a resistor reduces the current in a circuit those substances which have infinitely high electrical resistance are called insulators 
An insulator does not allow electricity to flow through it. Rubber is an excellent insulator. Electricians wear rubber hand gloves while working with electricity because rubber is an insulator and protects them from electric shocks. So in the same way wood is also a, an example of one of the good insulators. Let us understand what are the factors that affect the resistance of a conductor. The electrical resistance of a conductor depends on the following factors. First, length of the conductor, area of cross section of the conductor or thickness of the conductor you can say. Nature of material of conductor and finally temperature of the conductor. So first, we will we'll go one by one, we will understand one by one. So effect of length of the conductor on the resistance. So it has been found by experiment that an increase but that on increasing the length of wire its resistances the resistance increases and on decreasing the length of wire its resistance decreases. So actually the resistance resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to its length and hence it, hence it is written that resistance that is R is directly proportional to L that is length of conductor. Now, effect of area of cross section of the conductor on resistance. So it has been found by experiment that the resistance of a conductor is inversely proportional to its area of cross section. So more is the area of cross section, less is the resistance. Okay. So resistance R is the inversely proportional to area of cross section. So a thick wire has less resistance and a thin wire has more resistance. So from the above discussion, it is clear that to make resistance wires or resistors, short length of a thick wire is used for getting low resistance and long length of thin wire is used for getting high resistance. So effect of the nature of material of the conductor. So the electrical resistance of a conductor depends on the nature of the material of which it is made. Some materials have low resistance whereas others have high resistance. For example, if you take two similar wires having equal length and diameter of copper metal and nichrome alloy, you will find that the resistance of nichrome wire is about 60 times more than that of copper wire. This shows that the resistance of a conductor depends on the nature of the material of the conductor. Now, effect of temperature, four subpoints. It has been found that the resistance of all pure metals increases on raising the temperature and decreases on the decreases on lowering the temperature. Let us understand the resistivity, the term resistivity. So it has been found by experiments that the resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to length. That is R is directly proportional to length. L. The resistance of a conductor is inversely proportional to the area of cross section that is R is inversely proportional that is R is uh, directly proportional to 1 upon A or we say that R is inversely proportional to A. So by combining these two relations we get R is equal to rho L upon A where rho is a constant known as resistivity of the material of the conductor. So resistivity is also known as specific resistance. Therefore, the above, so therefore, we can get the equation that is for resistivity that is rho equal to R A upon L where R is resistance of the conductor, A is area of cross section of the conductor and L is the length of the conductor. The resistivity of a substance is numerically equal to the resistance of a rod of that substance which is 1 meter long and 1 square meter in cross section. Since the length is 1 meter and the area of cross section is 1 square meter, so it becomes a 1 meter cube. So we can also say that the resistivity of a substance is equal to the resistance between the opposite phases of 1 meter cube of the substance. So unit of resistivity is rho is ohm into meter square upon meter that is ohm meter. The SI unit of resistivity is ohm meter, which is uh, written as uh, the ohm meter as in the symbolic form. 
Please note that the resistivity of a substance does not depend on its length or thickness. It's, it depends on the nature of the substance and temperature. Also note that the good conductor of electricity should have a low resistivity and a poor conductor of electricity will have high resistivity. Taking the reference of the tables mentioned uh, uh, for the resistivity of some common substances, uh, the resistivity of alloys are much more higher than those of pure metals from which they are made. For example, the resistivity of manganese, which is alloy of copper, manganese and nickel is about 25 times more than that of copper. And the resistivity of constantin, which is alloy of copper and nickel is about 30 times more than that of copper metal. So it is due to their high resistivity that manganese and constantin alloys are used to make resistant resistance wires that is resistors used in electrical appliances to reduce the current in an electric circuit. The heating elements of electrical heating appliances such as electric iron and toaster are made up of alloy rather than of pure metal because the resistivity of an alloy is much higher than that of pure metal. Second, an alloy does not undergo oxidation easily even at high temperature when it is red hot. For example, nichrome alloy is used for making uh, heating ele element of electric appliances such as electric iron toaster, electric kettle, room heaters, water heaters, that is geysers and hair dryers example. Nichrome has very high resistivity. So due to which the heating element made of uh, nichrome has a high resistance and produces a lot of heat on passing current. Nichrome does not undergo oxidation easily at high temperature. So the resistivity of a semiconductors like silicon and germanium is in between those of conductors and insulators. Resistors in series. In the mentioned diagram, you can see that there are three resistors that is R1, R2 and R3. Uh, uh, the potential difference across each resistors are different. Therefore, we write that V that is net voltage across the circuit equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 where V1 is the potential uh, is the voltage across resistor 1 that resistor R1 V2 across resistor R2 V3 across resistor R3 but current is constant in the overall circuit okay so by Ohm's law we write that V equal to V1 plus V2 plus, uh, normally it's a, the equation that is written as V equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 substituting the equation by Ohm's law uh, we get that V equal to V equal to I R S we write S for series so R S for series therefore equation can be written as I R S equal to I R 1 plus I R 2 plus I R 3 so current is constant throughout therefore we get R S equal to R 1 plus R 2 plus R 3 so I have explained this in a very shorter way uh, you can just go through this testers in series part and the derivation below it so just uh, remember as it is written so that will help you a lot okay so if the resistors are conducted in series then the current is same in every part of circuit the resistance of the combination of re resistors is equal to the sum of the individual resistors yeah finally in at the end we are getting the equation that is rs equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 so the second point is explaining the same. The total voltage across the combination is equal to sum of the voltage draw drop across the separate resistors. The effective resistance in a series combination is greater than the individual resistances. Yeah, obviously because RS is RS as an individual is obviously greater than R1 or R2 or R3 because RS is sum of R1 plus R2 plus R3 okay so sub combination this combination is used to increase resistance in a circuit 
डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ सीरीज सर्किट फॉर डोमेस्टिक वायरिंग इन सीरीज सर्किट इफ वन इलेक्ट्रिकल अप्लायंस stop working due to some defect then all the other electrical appliances also stop working because the whole circuit is broken in series circuit all the electrical appliances have only one switch due to which they cannot be turned on and on or off separately in series circuit the appliances do not get the same voltage at, as that of power supply line because voltage is shared by all the appliances in the series connection of electrical appliances the overall resistance of the circuit increases too much due to which the current from the power supply is low 